everyone. <laughs> I think we're broadcast, we're live, and it's real. This is definitely real. Um, I'm Karen Wolf, and I changed my setting today. I am in my home, and I'm so excited to welcome Tara Van Lunen from Philip Jeffries. Hi, Tara. And Michelle. Hi. Thanks and Michelle, for having me. Oops, sorry. And Michelle, who's been co-hosting with me and helping me through the technicalities of our new normal. So, um, I'm going to share my screen in a second and fill you in a little bit about who I am and why I'm doing this. So just give me a second. Okay, does everyone see this? Okay, great, I can't hear you, but you can hear me. So welcome, we are this week going to review while covering trends. And for those that have tuned in in the past, so far we've covered um, paint, and custom colors, we've covered home office. Last week we had an art advisor and I am continuing with this new format that has been absolutely fantastic where I'm interviewing experts in the industry. And so I'm particularly, particularly thrilled this week um, to get to know Tara Van Lunen a little bit better from Philip Jeffries. It's such a rare opportunity um, that I get to you know, go behind the scenes with the talent that truly is making what we buy as designers and what you receive as, as consumers pop. And I would have to say that out of all of the manufacturers that we deal with, Philip Jeffries really gets it right every single time. They are always on trends. Um, it is probably the most exciting presentation that we receive um, each month when our rep comes in or every couple of months when our rep comes in. We're, we're beyond thrilled because it's like eye candy. So being able to interview Tara and let her explain how she arrives at that process and you know the creativity that goes into it and the influences is really, really exciting. I mean, I'm jumping up, up and down with joy and I was so excited in the pre-interview with her. So I think you'll really enjoy this. And then of course, we will wrap up with some few questions and answers and tips and tricks on wallpaper. So here we are and also I should just preface by saying, and I do this every week, but we're design, I'm Karen B. Wolf from a full service boutique design firm. And we're known for our layered modern interiors with thoughtful inclusions of color and texture. And once upon a time, I was a trend forecaster. And so here I am today again, bringing that talent back to you guys and hoping to open the world to you so you can see what we see as designers. So Tara. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? First of all, thank you so much for taking the time to do this and spending the time to really put together such a thoughtful presentation. Um, can you tell me a little bit about you know who you are at Philip Jeffries and what your what your role is? Absolutely. So yeah, I just want to say thank you for having me on your your well, panel today. I'm a big fan of your work, thank and you I just so. love that um, you started this just to bring the design community together. It's, a, it's such a great idea. Um, so I'm I'm the design director for Philip Jeffries Wall Covering. I oversee the product development department and uh, sourcing division. So I'll go into more detail about that pretty soon. Okay, and also just on your point of bringing the design community together, right now with COVID, it is so important for us to all support each other. I mean, we're doing it in all areas of our lives and in this industry in particular, it's been so hard hit on many levels and just being able to bring together the community and shout out and showcase the talent so that everyone has a chance to be exposed. 100%. So Philip, Philip Jeffries um, has a very, very special story. And about a year ago, I was at a luncheon where I firsthand got to learn their story and it really resonated. I'd love for you to fill us in a little bit about who they are um, and what makes Philip Jeffries so special. Right. Uh, so Philip Jeffries is actually a second generation family owned and operated company. Uh, you can see Philip and Jeffrey on the screen here. Philip's on uh, the left and Jeffrey's on the right. They're actually brothers. Uh, their father, Eric, started the company um, back in the 70s. And he had just 10 grass cloths in the line. And now we're well over a thousand SKUs. So we live and breathe wall covering. We have the largest selection of in-stock, ready-to-ship wall coverings, and not many can say that. So we do one thing, and uh, that's wall covering, and we do it fantastically. And what, um, do, you, what do you think their philosophy is uh, towards 
you know, the business that makes it also so unique being an employee there and also how they manage their, their reps and the designers and the world around them. Their whole perspective is about making it easy. So we want to make it easy for the client. We want to make it easy for the designer. We want to make it easy for the installer. So we're thinking about all the elements and just making it really easy for everyone. Um, I think you're absolutely right because almost everything is available. We get it so quickly. And the way you present material to the trade in these, we get these cards so you can see them. <laughs> Plus, get samples sent to you. They are literally shipped out immediately. I don't think anything can arrive so quickly. It, mm -hmm. The tools that are provided by Philip Jeffries are incredible. But also, like I said before, what's even as incredible to me is the breadth of the product line and the beauty um, of of the line in terms of the design and the perspective that went into it. It really stands above. Um, yeah. So if we could go over a few examples of, because this really covers, like what Philip Jeffries has pretty much covers, I would say the entire array of wall coverings available in the industry. Right. So if you could walk us through, you know, the different types of, of product and material. Right. Yeah. So you said it. Um, we definitely have a wide range in, of wall coverings, um, both in style and techniques. Um, so our naturals are probably what we're most known for. Um, and we're also known for just being a texture house. So think about your chunkiest grass cloth to your finest silks. And it's just great for laying or layering a room. Um, so our naturals cover... Um, you know, there are traditional grasses like arrowroot and raffia. Um, we have things like hemp, jute, and even cork. For textiles, um, again, it's like fine silks, chunky linens, uh, smooth velvets. Um, it could really dress up a room or make it more casual. And right. then for our specialty, um, we have uh, wood veneers, metallic leaf, we have raised relief, um, and then hand-painted wall covering. So just to show, just to show a quick example, for example, this would be a natural. Um, right. This is a Bermuda hemp, and there are so many skews that fall into this category. This is one of our, our personal favorites. Mm -hmm. um, and then this would be an example of a, um, a specialty is something that where you're adding a technique to it, right? So, yeah, so that's the Nailed It collection or rivets, and um, it's totally customizable too, so you can change the ground and the rivet color. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other thing that's really unique about you guys is the way that you're manufacturing the whole lamination process, which I was really interested in hearing about when you were explaining that to me. Can mm -hmm. you get it to whoever is listening today? Yeah, so we actually own our own factory in Japan. And we are known for having really excellent quality because of our attention to detail during the manufacturing process and expert lamination. So nobody wants a, a cro crooked grass cloth on the wall. Everything needs to be straight and looking um, as best as possible. So we really have a lot of attention to detail um, and our machinery is a state of the art to make sure that happens. So can you back up for a minute and just explain what is, what is lamination for somebody who may not know? Right, so um, the wall cover or the surface um, decorative layer needs some stability before it goes onto the wall. So if you have a textile, it has to have like a paper backing and the paper backing is what you would put the glue on and then put it up on the wall. And so I understand that Philip Jeffries has a proprietary process that is unique to you, which is what makes the quality so much better and enables the paper to be much straighter and more precise, right? Right, exactly. And that's, that's in Japan, correct? Where right, yeah, like I said, we have our own factory in Japan, which makes it really easy just to oversee the design and the production process. So we're working hand in hand with them. And so this slide is just kind of showing uh, the wide array of the buckets of, or the categories of wallpapering that Philip Jeffries covers. Mm-hmm. So Tara, back to you. So you're, the, you're really the visionary behind this, and you run a team, right, right. At, at Philip Jeffries. So tell me a little bit about how, how you got this amazing job, um, and not only that, but you know, how you're able to continually bring 
such amazing design direction to Philip Jeffries. Right. Um, so when I was younger, um, I was always crafting, painting, sewing my own clothes, just like always busy with some type of project. Um, and it stuck with me into my adult years. And I was lucky enough to find a company like PJ that lets me explore my creativity every day. Um, I studied fashion at Berkeley and um, I found my passion in uh, textile design. Um, and I've been with Philip Jeffries over a decade now. Um, and the wall coverings that I've created with my team have won a best of year award six out of the last 10 years in a row. Um, and my team, I maybe I'm biased, but I am lucky enough to have one of the best design teams in the entire world. I have, <laughs> I have six designers um, that I work with and um, they come from all different walks of the design world. So interior design, fashion, graphic design, and even fine artists. And so, I think that our diverse background just helps us approach design from every angle. So tell me what's happening here in this, in this photo. This is obviously your team, and what are you guys doing there? Right. So it's some of my team. I wish I had a picture of everybody here. But um, we're doing a shibori dyeing. So we, we always have, like, creative days and um, always doing some type of new project. So here we were doing some shibori art. So you were, you were practicing a form of art that you think might translate well or could translate to your wallpapers, right? Yes. And that's, exactly. why, you were, that's why you were doing this. So what other um, forms or classes have you taken or, or you know, workshops have you done with your group in-house? And then mm -hmm. you take that technique and applied it to wallpaper. Because I think that's incredible that you are firsthand practicing it and then figuring out that it can or can't work. And, and then understanding the process so that you can direct, you know, the artisans that are, that are going to be making this for you. Right. Um, well, you'll see in just a moment when we introduce spring that uh, we had a, a big focus on marbleization. Um, so that's been a big one for us recently. Okay, great. And I also loved when you said um, the words of wisdom from Eric. From Eric. Oh, yes. That really, uh, I almost sent that to everyone in my office. I love it. <laughs> it's it's always stuck with me. Um, Eric Brashad, uh, the chairman of Philip Jeffries, our founder, has always said, the world is a scary place from behind your desk. And uh, it just has always like resonated with me. And um, he has always encouraged me to get out and see new things and learn. And I think that's really helped me with my design process of just, you know, having this like worldly view. And now that I have a design team of my own, um, you know, I encourage them to get out as well, um, just to see what's out there and be inspired. So speaking of that, when you're creating a collection, um, your inspiration is coming from many facets, right? right. So where, where is your inspiration coming from? And then how, how are you taking that inspiration and making a collection for Philip Jeffries? Because... Mm -hmm. One thing to be inspired, it's another thing to actually like translate it and make it happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, it is a long process. So we work um, about 18 to 12 months out, uh, just like the fashion world. Um, we scout trends. We spend time with designers like yourself, the sales team. Um, we share stories. It's very collaborative. So um, we're working hand in hand with Philip and Jeffrey with their vision um, we also work with the marketing and sales team um, to figure out what our key stories are going to be for the year. Um, and once we figure out those stories, then um, those become like our homing beacon for everything that we do, the colors, textures, patterns. So. so where are those stories coming from? I mean, I'm assuming there's obviously outside subscription um, companies that you can get trends from, and that's one thing. And that's everybody's getting the same information when it comes to that. But then mm -hmm. you're adding another layer in. So you're traveling and visiting villages, and what else are you doing to come yeah. up? With? What's relevant and why? Um, so, yeah, the other part of what I do is sourcing. So um, I travel to a lot of different places around the world uh, looking for different raw materials to use for wall coverings. Um, and we actually created a program around this called PJ Artisans. Um, you can see actually on the, the next slide some of the um, techniques here. 
Um, so we work hand in hand with artisans um, um, that are coming from like uh, small entrepreneurial mills. Um, our goal is to preserve their craft and we want to teach them new techniques. So it really is a partnership of them sharing the craft and us sharing our design vision and techniques. Um, so are you able to share any of the locations that you've been to? Or that's, um, that might be I have, <laughs> It's our secret sauce. Um, well, you know, obviously I've traveled to Japan quite a lot. Um, and I would just say Asia at large and um, European areas, so. Right. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you create your, um, just going back for a second, you create your collections, um, yep. you create a story, a theme, a season of vision, and then you also set a color, color splash. So for spring 2020, which really just released about a month and a half ago, maybe, right? So it's their most recent in January, yeah. in January, and mm -hmm. it's, um, it's really beautiful. Can you explain how you pulled this together? So I'm going to, you can, t you can cue me now on how you want me to move through the slides and okay. talk about, you know, the overall vision and the inspiration behind this most recent collection. Right. So, so yeah. Spring 2020 was Art Decade. Um, it's our newest collection and it's taking inspiration from the electrifying energy and playful attitude of the Art Deco movement. Um, so uh, we look at the classic architecture, um, glam vibes um, from that era. Um, we incorporated sleek lines, uh, playful geometric patterns, luxe surfaces, and shimmering metallics. And the key is it's like a modern twist on a very classically chic era. Um, so I'm actually going to show you just some highlights. We, we had uh, 20 collections overall, but this is just... Um, a highlight. So, so here you're taking, you know, the fan motif and scallops, right? And incorporating, incorporating those patterns into. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that was the scallop print is um, just really iconic. Um, and people like living with round shapes. So um, it just really makes sense know. right now. Um, and geometric patterns always add like dimension to a room. What and about color? I mean, color, yes, very color, important. Color, color. <laughs> I know we've been living with a lot of white walls, and now that we're all home, I'm sure that um, color is going to be, it's, be, it's been very important. It's going to come back even more, yeah. especially now that we're locked in. So tell yeah. me a little bit about, you know, in, the, in these two slides, the, the color palettes and also the architectural forms and the materials that we're seeing here. Right. Um, so definitely uh, it's evoking like sleek lines and rich textiles. Um, we're looking at amazing uh, color, like mid-tone blues. Um, we we're talking about this the other day, of, like what kind of blue this is. Um, so I'd say like a deep French blue um, has a little bit of purple in it. Yeah. Um, and um, rich pinks as well, adding in some jewel tones and then just accenting it with um, some brass. Great. And then um, here we are with Metropolitan Marble. So how would you describe this portion of the, of the line? Right. So Metropolitan Marble um, takes a lot of inspiration from architecture, obviously mar marbleization, um, and then um, the uh, metallic inlay. So you can see on the next slide, it has a really beautiful installation. Um, and it creates like a seamless effect on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, this collection is just perfectly uh, classically designed for like minimal spaces. You could put it in dining rooms and foyers. Um, and on the next slide, you could also see the handcrafted process. So before when you were asking about the different techniques that we were exploring, um, marbleization is uh, one of them. So um, just walking through the process, so first we uh, cut the paper into squares, and then we do this, um, the marbleization technique. Um, and then we're laying down uh, strips of metallic. And then you can see the picture on the right-hand side where we're actually laminating it to the paper backing. And the beauty of it is that it's all done by hand. And the marbleization is really spontaneous and just uh, you know, you're going to have something unique on your wall. So this is not a digital print. This is all the 
all hands applied. Right. Wow. Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so here are the, some of the examples of the colors that you can get in this, in this portion of the, of the collection, mm -hmm. which is beautiful. So moving along, then we have Terrazzo, which when I saw this a month and a half or two months ago, I, I was like, wow, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Terrazzo. I um, wasn't quite sure if we were going to use this yet. I keep pulling it out for projects, so I'd love to hear you know, your, your interpretation of this, and then I, have, I know what I do like about it. So. Right, yeah. So it is a hot look right now. I know that it is, um, you know, some people think it is uh, more specific, um, but we have to acknowledge it, and it is trending right now. Um, I think it is an important element of the story if we're thinking about um, marbling. Um, naturally, we think about terrazzo as well. Um, and it's just, uh, we sort of put like a modern uh, twist on it. So if you see on the, the next slide, um, there's a beautiful install picture. It's this is seamless as well. Um, so what we're doing is actually um, digitally printing um, the um, uh, surface layer and then adding um, metallic chips, um, I'm sorry, mica chips on top. So it has more depth and layering than just like a paper print. So what I, I also love about it is I think your color stories are, are more current than when you see, you know, terrazzo in the floor. And right. also the scale. The scale is incredible. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's just, it's a little more dramatic um, because it's going on the wall. And I loved it. To me, that's what kind of surprised me with it. It's, a be it's actually really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, we were very careful with the colors. We didn't want to make them uh, too crazy. I think the, the craziest one we have is the, the orange one. Yeah, um, 6510. 6510. Yep. We wanted to make it really monochromatic for the rest of them. And then Splash. That's another wow. So mm -hmm. why don't you take me through Splash a little bit? Yeah, so the inspiration for this uh, definitely comes from uh, free-flowing brushstrokes um, and abstract painterly art. And um, you might wonder, what does it have to do with Art Decade? But um, like I said before, um, it's so important to... Um, incorporate uh, a modern element in the a classic Art Deco story if you're if it's like a modern retelling. Right. So your take. So we had this discussion a little bit earlier, which is if you're doing Art Deco, how is Splash, which is graffiti art, Art Deco? And I guess mm -hmm. the the concept was to not take it to not be as literal to make sure that you're bringing modern elements, and that's why it's called Art through the decade, exactly. right? Not art deco yeah. per se. So you, exactly. need to, you need to address what's happening in the market today, but then bring it back to a trend story, which is art, dec art deco. <laughs> right, yes, yeah, so you hit it on the nose. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Yeah, because not every client is into art deco, so you have to design for everyone. Right. So Splash is a beautiful story, and also what you can do as a designer, if you, you know, or if you're going to use Philip Jeffrey's wallpaper and you hire a designer and you don't want this color story, it, it, there is a minimum, but you can change the, the colors and customize this for your, for your walls. And the other thing I wanted to mention about Splash is just that this trend also is addressing the overall you know, trend in large format wall murals, which is you've been doing now for quite some time. This is just another introduction you know, in that category, but that category itself is a trend. Right. Yeah. And we also do our digital printing in New Jersey. So um, it makes it really easy for custom projects. We can do um, mix and match, which is taking any of these colorways and putting it on any of our grounds. And then we also do custom coloring and custom scale for our 40 panel minimum. Great. So deco hemp is deco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the yeah. tea. Um, I'm skipping to the, the wow. Wow. So tell me about <laughs> Deco Hump. Uh, so Deco Hump was um, definitely inspired by Art Deco architecture. So think like the Chrysler Building, Empire State Building. This is probably the most like literal translation. Um, here you can see a really great install. Um, beautiful seamless effect on the wall. 
Um, it has an awesome like metallic inlay and it just adds so much dimension on the wall. So this was my personal favorite. No surprise probably for mm -hmm. anyone who does know my work. Um, that's not true though. We like a lot, almost all of Phil Jeffrey's wallpapers, but wall coverings, I should say. We need to address that by the way. In two seconds, I might interrupt this and have you tell me the difference between a wallpaper and a wall covering. But this is the, this is, um, sorry, Deco Hemp. I didn't want to pronounce it wrong. And it's gorgeous. So just bringing that. What's your favorite color? Well, again, no surprise. Indigo. <laughs> What about you on that one? Um, I like the the brown actually. I think the one it's that's a really good brown. It's yeah, beautiful. actually the one in the install. Yeah, it's just a well, really good awesome. usable brown. And that chocolatey brown. I mean, I know our ears might. You just might want to go like this, but mm -hmm. it's back. Yeah, it's really coming back. I mean, it's not necessarily being combined with that baby blue the way we were seeing it in the '90s, but um, the late '90s. But it's um. It's coming back, and now you might put it with that French blue that you were showing before, and it takes on a whole different genre, and it's yep. beautiful. Okay, so what is, by the way, the difference between a wall covering and a wallpaper? And then, so, and then we can see how this is made. <laughs> sure. So a wallpaper is just that. It's paper. It's a, um, a printed paper, whereas a wall covering can be anything from a textile to a grass cloth, um, a hand-painted... Um, there's just a lot more texture to it. So I've, I will not call any other, I will not call any of your wall coverings wallpapers anymore if that ever did come out of my mouth. I oh, wait, that. let's go back <laughs> and talk about um, how this is made because again, this is an amazing process. Right, so um, this is the part that I absolutely love is just talking about the handcrafted process. So. First, we're taking our classic Soho hemp, and um, that's all hand woven. And then um, we're cutting it into these like teardrop shapes. And then you can see the image on uh, the right hand side where we're actually laying it down all by hand, um, uh, collaging it together. And um, we're leaving just a little bit of the ma that metallic showing, I like to call it like a grout line, um, just so that it adds more dimension. It's really stunning mm -hmm. and then these are the, the this is the palette that it comes in so mist is another part of this new collection mm -hmm. different mood so let's explain let's talk to mist yeah so uh, think of mist as your mystical utopia so um, in here you see a, an emerging mountainscape um, and it lends itself to more of like a abstract feeling um, and then you can see the next slide is the, um, the installation image. So it's actually digitally printed on our grounds. Um, and Art Deco has always had, um, it's a little bit eclectic, so it has a mix of this exotic element because it's like rich and luxe um, and um, being worldly is part of that. Uh, so that's where mist comes in. Um, and here we have like an ethereal take on a mountainous landscape. And the grounds that we used were um, to help it tie back to the Art Decade story. So that's why we used uh, Gilded Age and the Metallic Leaf, um, which you'll see on the next slide um, with all the color range, um, just to help tie it back. It's absolutely beautiful. I have to say it's grown on me. You know, every time I look at it, and it has so much, um, it has such a, a beautiful story to it. You're, this is, you know, people sometimes are afraid that they might get sick of their wallpaper. Um, and that's one of the, the obstacles that we, you know, hear as a designer, like, oh, but what if I don't want it in five years and then I have to strip it down? This is something that is so livable, despite yeah. the fact that it's large. Um, I think it tells a beautiful story and it's so artistic that it feels like you brought art into your home. Yeah, well said. Okay, so now we're gonna take a poll. Michelle, are you back? Because I know you run my polls. Um, this is our favorite part of this. So if you can vote for your favorite in the new collection from Philip Jeffries, and we didn't go over all of it, but two, two others that weren't introduced was Modern Moon and then Couture Weaves. So I'd love to see what you guys like. And I think that Tara really wants to know what's going to win out here. 
<laughs> Especially because it's probably like it's probably like her babies. It's her heart and souls. I love them all. <laughs> I can I can relate to that. That's how we feel when we design a room. Like we just there are babies, and then mm-hmm. we have to move on and go to the next baby. <laughs> right. Yes. So, do you want to know what's winning? Yes. Well, I think it's a little unfair because Modern Moon didn't really get to, you couldn't really see it, yeah. um, but it is cool. What do you think is winning? I'm going to say Deco Hemp. All right. You've got it. What do you think's in second place? <laughs> um, maybe Metropolitan Marble. I don't know. <laughs> Try again. Mist? Try again. Couture weave. You're going to be shocked. Try again. I don't know. Just tell me. <laughs> no way. Oh, wow. Um, so now I know, which is great, because we've been wanting to use Terrazzo, and I keep pulling it out. I'm like, no, I don't know. And it is more widely accepted than I thought. So basically, You must have a lot of early adopters on the call. <laughs> I know. We have Decoham that won. Um, Terrazzo came in second, Mist is third. I thought Splash would be higher. Splash was fourth. And then the other two really didn't get a fair shake. Couture, Weave, mm-hmm. and Modern Moon. So, all right, I'm going to end the poll. Thank you guys for doing it. If I share the results, you see the percentages, right, Michelle? Can I do that? Does that matter? Okay. Mm. Okay, so going to the next page. So, you know... Prior to um, COVID, you created these collections, and now obviously we're in a whole different environment and a whole different world, and we've been staring at our walls for a very long time, a little too long, and there's a lot of theory and thought as to what's going to come out of this, you know, what trends will come out of COVID moving forward. So prior to COVID, what do you... um, why do you think wall coverings in general were trending? And then moving forward, how do you see wall coverings changing? Um, Well, why wall coverings were so important, um, I believe it just adds so much uh, depth and dimension to a room. Um, I think it just, it's a finishing element. It just makes the room look super luxe. Mm -hmm. and, and very well designed. So um, what we were seeing beforehand is um, kind of like this uh, maximalist versus minimalist movement. And um, it was, I think it was a reflection of just what is happening within the world. Um, you know, there's, there's so much uh, extreme happening right now with like politics and weather and social issues. And I think that um, that's definitely reflected in the home. I agree. I mean, we've been seeing this maximalist movement. I don't think that we per se have clients that fall into that category, but it's a very strong trend in the industry. And I think some of your new papers definitely speak to that. But there's also been all these white walls. Um, We're coming out of like, first it was moving out of the age of gray, then we're moving out of the age of white. And now it's moving into, you know, personalization and color. And so... And, and as we, like you said, cocoon in our homes moving forward and our homes are going to become really that much more important, mm-hmm. how, how do you think your wall covering will address that trend? And are there any modifications that you might need to make to it also to address safety issues with COVID? Uh, sure. So um, definitely we're thinking about like curating, uh, curated design. Everybody's thinking about that right now because we're, we're home. We're thinking about uh, decluttering and um, just finding beauty in the things that we have and emphasizing them. So um, then we can, uh, you know, layer in just these amazing texture, i.e. the wall. Um, and then um, we're cocooning in comfort. Um in comfort and in color. So we're seeing a lot of warm colors. You know, we talked to the brown before in uh, deco hemp. Um, I think that we're going to continue to see a lot of that, um, not only in that rich chocolate, but around a realm of, of browns. Um, and then, you know, we're spending so much time at home. We're not, I'm so used to traveling the world and I'm spending probably more time 
at home than I have in the past couple years, which is great too. Um, but we're going to want to bring in the outside world um, because we're not able to get out as much. So um, that's where I feel like a lot of these collections like Blossom will come into play. And Ethereal for calming. I Actually, Ethereal is one of my favorite collections, personally. Um, that last, that didn't come out in the winter. That was the mark the That was fall. fall. Yeah. yeah. It was fall. Yeah. So we recently used this in one of our clients' homes. It is beautiful. It has a one. It has a almost like a brocadey look underneath, and then it looks like it's tie dyed over it. Or um, I don't know what you guys did to it, but it's beautiful. It's vintagey and worn, but the color palette is very, very, very soft. Yeah, I think that one definitely evokes that cocooning color. Like mm -hmm. you were saying, it has that a uh, bit of layering because we um, print on the backing paper, and then we're adding that textile on top to make it more of that like cocooned feeling. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So Tara, <laughs> what yeah. is your favorite wall covering? Oh. I mean, you have a thousand SKUs, right? <laughs> and you've been there for 12 years. So how many products? 13. Lines? 13. Right. How many product lines? I can't even imagine how many introductions you've created. Yeah, I, I don't know that number off the top of my head. A lot. <laughs> uh, we're always coming out with something new. Um, my favorite, though, is definitely Rivets. It was the very first collection that I worked on um, when I joined Philip Jeffries. And uh, so it, it has a very special place in my heart. Um, I love the texture, the raised elements. I just think it's effortless and timeless. And you can customize it. So this is a newer Rivet. I love this rivet pattern. We yeah. love the rivet pattern in our office, and it's funny that you love it too because we keep pulling it out. And then every time we pull it out, we're like, oh my gosh, this has been around now. This is what, the fifth year, the sixth year? How many years has rivets been out? Well, at least 10 years now. 10 years, okay. Yeah. And, and, we're like, and we're still using it? And then we look at each other and we're like, no, we can't do that. Yes, we can. Yeah. <laughs> so we put it right back in because it is so timeless, so classic and beautiful. And now with the, the customization that you're enabling, you really can make it totally unique to the space that you're in. Right. So, and in homes where it's been up for 10 years, I think it looks just as fresh and new as it did then. So it's, yeah. I agree, it's a winner. So your source of nature, you like, I know you told me this, so where do you, what's your personal favorite source? Um, yes, so nature is my um, favorite place to look for inspiration, and I love this quote from my favorite designer, Alexander McQueen, um, just that there's no better designer than nature. There's an endless source of inspiration from nature, so just try to get out. <laughs> I love that. And then longevity, and I asked you what has the most longevity, but I also am really glad that we're touching on this category also because there's such a misnomer, in my opinion, with vinyls. And mm -hmm. your vinyls do not look like vinyls. So right. not only is, are the vinyls probably have the longest um, longevity or the best longevity, but they also look incredibly realistic. And from my perspective, address many of the COVID concerns that we have in our homes today. So I bet you guys are gonna see a spike in sales in that category. Yes, because they're, they're washable. You can, um, you know, you can clean them, you can wash them. Um, so everyone's thinking about washing their cans obsessively and, and you can wash your walls as well. And you can still have that look of our grass cloths and textiles and specialties. Um, they're just, uh, you know, a way to um, have them um, a little bit more durable. Yep. So for wall covering tips, um, you know, I don't really think that most of the people who are listening to this are going to try to put up Philip Jeffries wallpaper on their own. But <laughs> if, if there is somebody out there who's that bored and is thinking about doing this, we highly don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's really important. You should use uh, an installer, a professional uh, paper hanger, as they say. Um, the installer will come to your house. They'll do an estimate. Um, the things that you want to provide to them are your room dimensions. Um, they'll come to the house and take the dimensions for themselves. Um, you'll want to let them know just the condition of your walls, um, your ceiling height, um, and then the um, 
the specs about the product that you want to install. So the width, the trims to, the repeat, um, if it's a reverse hang or drop match, um, your roll size. So those are all really important elements so that they can give you the most accurate um, estimate and so that you're not over ordering. Well, and I think also when you do it yourself, sometimes you under order because you don't account, you don't realize that you have to account for the windows and the doors. And yeah. so then you end up with a mismeasurement. And the other thing is that we've learned the hard way. You need a good installer and it's worth the investment in somebody who can install properly. That makes, I've, ha I've had, I mean, truth be told, I've had to rip down in the very beginning, not now. Um, <laughs> I've had to rip down wallpaper and redo it. And, you know, thank goodness it was on me and I had to learn my lessons. But it's because my installer did not understand how to, how to put the wallpaper up. So, Right. Uh, That's why you ask your installer, like, what papers and what wall coverings they're hanging so that you can know if they're, they're versed in, in uh, hanging Philip Jeffries wall covering. So there is a yardage calculator on Philip Jeffries, which I would recommend just using to give you a basic idea of, you know, how much is this product going to cost you? And then from there, leave it up to the professional. So another really good point that you made is that installation images are critical. And understanding how the wallpaper will seam or panel is really key. And, and the scale. And I think, you know, one thing I'm not even, I'm not sure that all of your wallpapers have this, but I noticed that recently some of them have a printout if it's, if it's a pattern or a complex pattern, and it will show the whole scale of the paper on the memo that we get. So we can, and then you can unfold it and put it up on the wall. Is that something that you've continued or are you, um, are you stopping? Like, are you doing that anymore or was that a test? So it's uh, primarily for anything with a um, mural or a print design. We try to put it on there because we know that installation shots just help sell the wall covering. Um, you know, we're such a visual industry and it just helps uh, the rep sell. It helps our interior designers sell the, the wall covering. Um, clients want to see how it's going to look in their home. So it's a good visual. And to that point, I think that you know, understanding this is, a, this is a dining room that we did a couple of years ago, understanding that grass cloth and some wallpapers will panel. So I don't know if you can see on the right, you see the seams and the, you know, it's not lining up exactly, but that's in our opinion, the beauty of it. But you need to know that before you purchase because we've had people get it where we haven't showed them the install shot or we forgot to say, go look at it online or understand what wallpaper is. And then it's going up and they're having a heart attack. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have a really great installer, they're going to uh, shade the grass cloth. So it's going to minimize the paneling as much as possible. And then, I mean, look at how you decorated the, this room. Like once you, add the art to the walls and um, all the other elements, it really minimizes the seams. So when you say shade, is that they're taking the wallpaper and then they're flipping it? So one piece goes up one way and then the next piece goes, turns the other way. Can you explain what shading is? Uh, yeah, shading, um, just imagine like a, a gradient. So um, you want to shade the wall covering so that it, um, you're matching the most similar colors together before you put it up onto the wall. And then um, there are seamless, seamless options from Philip Jeffries. And I'm not sure, I don't think we have a shot of that, do we? Yeah. So some examples of seamless wallpapers, Borderline, which is one of your newest ones, right, is seamless. And yeah, that one's Couture, from this one last year. This is a beautiful, I love this wallpaper. Couture is seamless. So seamless, it just means that you don't see, I'm pointing on my screen, you can't see that, you don't see the, the paneling. Yeah, um, it, it definitely minimizes the seams. I mean, if you get really close to wall covering, you're always going to be able to find a seam. But it's when you pull back and, um, you know, look at it, um, if you can see a, a seam. So the Simply Seamless just allows it to look like it's been woven onto the wall. And then we get a lot of questions. Can I paint over this wallpaper? <laughs> I don't like to hear that. <laughs> we don't like to hear it either, but what's your, what's your take on that question? I mean, personally, 
I wouldn't do it. Um, I mean, we have over a thousand uh, different grass cloths and um, <laughs> wall coverings in the line. So, and we have so many colors, I don't really see the need to do that. But if you really wanted to, um, like if you had an existing wall covering, um, I would test a little area before you do the whole thing. Um, and, uh, you know, just proceed with caution. And if you're thinking about doing it for a new wall covering, um, order some samples first and, and test it out. And then you, you said something in your pro tip that actually I think is a great point for even just regular wallpaper installation, which is use a base color that is similar to the color you are, forget painting, but you're installing. So when you're putting up a wallpaper and it's dark, your base color should work with that paper and not be white because then you're going to see in the little gapping the right. paint color from underneath, right? right. And, the, and the same kind of concept, like if you use a tinted primer, it's just to minimize the look of the seam. Yep. Um, so wall covering does not need to only go on your walls. Um, we've used it in the past on ceilings, and I know ceilings have also been a huge trend in the industry. The fifth, we call it the fifth wall. Mm -hmm. Where else have you seen an innovative designers? Because you have quite a few um, that you showcase on your website. Mm -hmm. Where have you seen them use your wall coverings in ways that are surprising or yes. adding value? <laughs> Uh, I love when designers will railroad wall covering. Um, I think so many of our wall coverings look great. So railroading means um, just turning it horizontally. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've also seen it inside of bookshelves, on uh, staircases. You can even collage it and make your own uh, really cool modern mosaic or work of art on the wall just using multiple wall coverings. Um, you can wrap furniture, and like Karen said, you can put it on the ceiling. So when you wrap furniture, do you need, um, do some wall wallpapers work better than others, and do you need to lacquer the top? Is that something that, is it going to rip on the edge? Like, are there any applications that we should be aware of to put over it so that it stays better? Sorry, for I think wrapping, you wrap furniture. For, for wrapping furniture, yes. I would definitely do a glaze on top. Um, you know, I would test a couple different um, uh, glaze um, mediums just to see, like, what works for you. Um, we don't have one that we recommend. Um, so it would just be, like I said before, just testing an area and just making sure that you're going to get the best end result. So that is the process. And I think everyone got a chance to see the beauty of the Philip Jeffries line. And, you know, this, these weekly presentations are not meant to be promoting um, for the sake of promoting. We truly believe as a design firm in the Philip Jeffries wall covering line, and it is a big go-to for us. Um, we use your product almost in, I mean, we probably use wallpaper in the majority of our homes and your product is always sourced throughout, you know, our, our designs. So wrapping this up, I really enjoyed, really, really enjoyed talking with you and getting the opportunity to learn how you put this together. What, what do you want to say to whoever's out there listening to this? Um, well, just thank you so much for having me. I had a really good time, Karen. Um, and PJ is fully operational. So, um, you know, we have thousands of yards in stock ready to ship from our New Jersey warehouse. Um, we have a, uh, a new launch coming out on May 12th, so I stay tuned. Wait. Okay, so my rep needs to get us in first. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sue Keenan will get on that. <laughs> okay, Sue Keenan, you, I hope you're listening. And also, you, thank, you gave us a really nice gift. So for if people want to be inspired, download the drop, and it'll be sent to you also in, in the, new, the email that you get after you hang up with us. Um, so you can download that. It just shows some of these beautiful installation shots for you and gives you something pretty to look at while you're <laughs> thinking about what you can do to your own house. And next week, um, I'm hoping to be speaking with Tabarka Studios on tile trends, and I can't wait for that either. And I hope you can join me next week as well. Thank you so much. And are there any questions before I hang up? Yes, we have one question. Um, how user-friendly are your wallpapers and the adhesive, and do they admit VOC? 
So our wall coverings, our natural wall coverings um, use um, water-based inks, so they do not have any VOCs. Um, and our, the question was about adhesives. Yeah. Which? Um, how user-friendly is the wallpaper and the adhesive? Um, well, like we said, we definitely want to use an, a professional wall covering installer. Um, they're very user-friendly because we have our hanging instructions on our website, so you can download those for your, your installer, and it lays it out pretty clear. What about, do you think maybe they meant the lamination adhesive, so the paper to the textile? Mm -hmm. Whatever adhesive you're using there. Yeah, the... the um, Adhesive that we use in the middle doesn't have any any VOCs in it, so we try to use as much natural materials as possible. Okay, are there any other questions? What? Uh, one more question. How long does it typically take from design idea to concept? Oh, design idea concept to fruition, and how many ideas don't make it? Mm -hmm. I have that question for you. <laughs> um, well, I got to tell you, we are, um, you know, we've actually, a lot of the things that we come up with, we, we go forward with. Um, so we work on things probably about 18 to 12 months out. And um, um, whether they end up in the, the story that we initially thought or in another story, um, everything that we um, think of kind of ends up coming to fruition sooner than later. Great. Thank you so much. Wrap up yeah. for a chance for a question. Going, going, gone. All right, everybody. I hope to see you next week. And thank you again. Michelle, thank you so much for helping as usual. And Tara, this was a delight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.